good morning and thank you for coming along with me on this journey of underpainting because that's where I'm starting today. Underpainting is a technique in which you use monochromatic tonal rendering to give you a full range of colors. You basically lay down your shadows first and you let them dry in a nice wash and you'd come back with a full range of colors. It creates more depth. The colors are more vibrant. It just makes everything pop. I'm using um, an Arches bright white hot press paper, which is probably going to be my favorite. This I've been using so many different papers lately, and I keep coming back to this one because it just lets the color shine through so much clearer and brighter. It just brings me joy. Underpainting is completely new to me. I haven't been doing it very long. In fact, this is my first try. I have other videos out where I've done it, and those were afters. I would definitely be doing it again. It makes the process longer, but so worth it. So here we go. Now I'm getting ready to set up by erasing some of my lines. I've laid down Payne's gray, Payne's blue. I actually think there's another gray in there that I need to look up and I'll try to put in here. I'll write it in. I can see it in my head, but it looks like concrete. It's one of, <laughs> that doesn't help you. So I do know the top is Jane's gray. The middle is Payne's blue, and I think the other one is the concrete mix with some Payne's gray. Um, I'm going in and reestablishing some hard lines on the corners, adding points of interest. This is a process you should do a lot um, in between all your layers just to like add back in that darkness where you need it. At least that's what I've been doing for a very long time. I'm pretty sure I learned it from Danielle Donaldson. Shout out to the queen. She's amazing and you should check her out because everything she does is awesome. Moving on now, picking up my colors, getting ready to start putting in some hard layers and I'm excited. And there comes purple. And that's Wisteria. So on the last part, you saw me glazing the middle cup, which is making sure the cup is completely dry before I take more pigment and put it on top, leaving lots of light spaces and preserving the light, which is the spaces in between here 
I'm coming in with a much darker color, um, indigo and Payne's blue mixed together to add that shadow. I've already put it down and then I'm coming back with a, just a wet brush to loosen up the edge so it's not a hard line and it lets it spread. This is glazing and it is flipping amazing, but you have to be really careful that you have all your elements dry before you start painting on top of them. Otherwise it will become a garbage fire, which sucks. Yes, just doing shadows right now on that one cup, really concentrating on making it pop. I did the Styria and then I ended up Rose Matter in another purple mix together for the lines and I'm loving it. It's coming together. You are looking at me currently trying to figure out how I want the top cup and the bottom cup to go together. So I'm basically, I think, going with analogous colors. It's a green bottom and I was thinking I want to do blue because they're close to each other on the color wheel in that range of three. And that's how I'm going to tie it all together. The yellow will then correspond more on the top um, that I have at the bottom with those flowers with the light. So I'm always trying to put in my mind, and I don't know if this is correct or not. This is just how I see things. I want everything to associate together and hold another piece of the puzzle from a different part. So the blue and the green to me go together and they work because they live in the same area. And then the blue flows into the purple and it works. So that is my reasoning on it. And I don't know if it's correct, but it feels right. Like how I sing out what I'm thinking. You're welcome. Regardless, I'm putting down my first wash. I want it to be a clean wash. I'm going to build it up. And I plan on putting um, 
pretty sure triangles. There will be a whole bunch of thought process going into patterning. I did the bottom one, which I did not record. I was literally over the entire project and my head was in the way. So that's how we roll here up in my house. Just hunch over stuff while we do it. It was just so delicate work and I needed it to be perfect that I needed to be on top of it. But you will get an amazing shot of my hand uh, painting out these triangles that are coming up. Before I do anything with the triangles, I make sure that my teacup is completely dry. Otherwise, it defeats the purpose and will bleed into it. And that's not glazing, that's blending. So, <laughs> you're welcome. Again, pro tip, make sure it's dry before you start.
it's getting time to paint the glasses, so I've pulled up a cobalt and watered it way down, and I'm going straight in and just covering up and making some glasses for this fine gentleman or lady, your preference. I don't know, what would a bunny be? I think it's up to the bunny. So once you go in with the light blue, at least for me, I'm gonna go in and immediately lift it because that's my MO. Let's be clear, I'm terrified of screwing up, so. <laughs> you get this far into a painting and you're like, what if I mess up? And your chances are you probably will and you should just let it go. But I still freak out just a smidge. Um, I'm not overworking, I don't think. Oh, there we go again. <laughs> so I'm lifting because I want to just add along the edges of the frames to show the blue and the middle be clear is my, I swear it's my goal here. I just don't like to lift everything up, I swear. But I want to give some kind of color barrier between the, the showing you, hey, there's glasses in these. They're not just those ones that people wear that don't have glasses, which I do not understand. Since I have been wearing glasses since I was two. If you're going to put glasses on your face, friend, you should be using them for vision. I mean, they're okay for fashion, but whatevs. I just don't get it. I love it when I see them and they're like, frank, they have no glass in them and I'm just baffled. I can't even wear contacts. It's insane. I think that there's like, sand in my eyes and I'm gonna die and my eyes are like at half glints because I've tried it and I, I did it because I wanted to impress another person which was stupid don't do that do not make yourself uncomfortable to impress said people there is absolutely no one in this world that is worth impressing to make your eyes hurt like those are so important your eyes are like the most important organ on your face <laughs> so <laughs> it's not an organ but you get what I'm saying. Like, you need your eyes. They're super important. So don't be putting, like, contacts in there if you don't like them. Like, what? Anyways, back to the painting. I'm waiting for it to dry in between because I have to go back over and over to do this because I will be unhappy with it until I get it just right. Adding in the cheeks and some color, which I'm going to throw it in the wind that I might lift it. Either with the brush or... Oop, I'm spreading it out. Oh, good. Have faith in yourself, Kristen. <laughs> oh, crap. There it is. <laughs> ah, this is entertaining. Anyways, so... Whoop, whoop, what's going on? What's happening? What's happening? Get a little closer for you. I love the wobble. My poor table. I am working on it. God bless you for making it this far if you did. You are a peach among men. So... You can see there it is blue and it, it's just like a glaze on top showing you there's a difference and that that little guy's peepers are hidden behind some glass.
going to do the lighting around the lamps and I come in and I really wet down my brush and bring in tons of water and make it be bubbly on top. So it's like puddles and I'm going to bring in the color now by loading my brush like and then dropping it in and just guiding it around how I think the light should look. A lot of pigment is going down right now trying to hit all the places where I put the water. You can see right there on the side, I hadn't put water there. So I'm bringing water back to make it softer. So it diffuses like it's an actual light coming down. got my white Copic ink out and I have my brush loaded and I'm going to add back some white that's very opaque and keep it dark so I can bring back those highlights that I lost. The transparency is still there in the colors but I've lost so much of the paper I would have had to really planned out and left that white, left that negative space for it to pop like that. That's okay. Come back with this Doc Martin um, white that's very thick. It's almost like a paint. I put it in my cap of the container it comes in and load it up with some water and keep it very thick on my brush. If you mess it up and you need to come back, you can add a little water. It lifts very well. It's very forgiving and you can get away with a lot with it. It's amazing and I love using it as my final point of interest in doing paintings and adding back details with white.
And there she is, the teacup mouse, completed and ready to be hung on a wall. Thanks for coming along with me. Thank you.